And we're live. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Miss Ann. And uh, thank you guys for who was in chat and waiting. Uh, don't forget, we love you guys. Uh, you have my number, so just send me a text. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, chat, you behave, okay? You be very nice to Anne, which I know you will anyway, but I'll talk to you guys in a bit. See you, Miss Anne. Hey everybody, happy Monday, good morning, and welcome back to another uh, Monday edition, I guess we can call that right, of uh, Reaper Toolbox Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne. How are you all? I, I saw early that we had a Cornico and an On the Road to Tea, I'm at, i.e. Margaret. Uh, and yeah, we had a technical issue there with Twitch that Justin was having problems with it. Justin will not be joining us today um, until maybe at the end of the stream because uh, he has a meeting. He's actually at Reaper uh, today, so... There is a meeting and he must be at it. We are alone. When the cat's away, the mice shall play. Shall we? Um, there isn't too much naughtiness we can get into, actually. <laughs> uh, hey, Jedi Jared and Andrew Kratt and Margaret and Kurniko and Daffodweer and Max Styles. Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, for once, you know, the problem with painting one thing on several streams, it, it, Margaret, is that it is, doesn't always interest your whole audience, right? So when I spend a lot of time on a model like I did with Spirit Beast, um, I just, you know, there comes a point where you're going to lose viewers because it's a lot of people are, just aren't interested in just that model. So uh, you want to switch it up, and that's really what this show is about anyway. So I decided that today we would do a different topic. I'll still finish out Spirit Beast, but uh, I won't do it on camera. Do -do. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Avelina. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Moonglooms Minis. Awesome. Moonglooms, are you new? If so, welcome. Or are you? have you lurked in the past? In which case, still welcome. Welcome to the chat. Uh, yeah, Justin gets grumpy when my viewership uh, dips, Margaret. So, you know, apparently I can't carry it just on, you know, the personality of me and Spirit Beast. Oh, I don't know what it is with these people. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to watch a spirit beast for eternity? Well, apparently there are people. Um, but actually, we didn't do too bad this past week. It's just the worry, right? The worry is that if you get too monotonous and you're doing the same thing for too long, um, you know, except with the exception of Dance of Death, right? Dance of Death, our viewership actually uh, improved. Um, but painting dragons is really its own kind of uh, weird thing. And so that just helped people's interest. And we also got a lot of new viewers who hadn't seen the earlier steps necessarily. So, you know, it varies. It depends on what you're painting. But if I ever paint Maldrakar, I mean, we'll have to keep an eye on it. <laughs> Maldrakar would be like a year and a half project. No, there wasn't actually, t uh, Margaret. I'd, I'd done pretty much everything on it. So, good morning, Twisted Oma. You've lurked. Oh, you're always working. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Excellent. Thanks. I'm glad you're here, Moon's Gloom. Welcome, welcome. And I'm glad you got to finally not lurk. That's, that's a lot of our viewers, actually, is they're forced to uh, to listen or watch while they're working, and so they can't really participate or they'll get in trouble, so I totally get it. Hey, Heather. I know what I want to do with Maldrakar, um, Margaret, on the road to Tiamat, uh, but uh, it would involve uh, an epic, epic stream, and I cannot do it on um, Reaper, uh, can I do it on Reaper? Because uh, I would convert her um, into a classic Tiamat. And to do that, that's a fair amount of sculpting and conversion work. But it also draws a direct comparison. Um, and I don't want to get Reaper in trouble or anything. So that means that I won't I won't do that. I mean, it would it would mean a lot of conversion. But, um, but yeah, I won't be doing it on, on stream. Hello, Gurgi. Hello, Emgrunig. Hello, Shadowspawn. 
Yeah, she's a huge project already, so I didn't really like plan any sort of diorama. It's the sort of thing where I don't, I haven't started because I need to be incredibly motivated to do it. Like I need to get so excited about the project in order to get through it. Um, that uh, it's just gonna sit there until I have like, a, oh my god, okay, finally, finally, I'm really motivated to uh, do my huge uh, conversion on uh, Maldricar. So that's it's just that sort of project because she's so big. So unless you're going to just quickie her or or airbrush her and and you know then do a bit of detail and call it done she really is a huge time investment any big dragon is but mal more than most right so uh so yeah you just gotta gotta have that enthusiasm to carry you through i think before you start that one morning astro squee Yeah, awesome. Awesome, Twistedoma. Yeah, actually, um, you know, L Lord of the Rings uh, in general is a fantastic movie to watch for inspiration and to learn about lighting, especially um, on armor and on uh, faces. That's actually how I learned. Uh, I finally clicked on both faces and NMM was Fellowship of the Ring because uh, Peter Jackson uses a lot of, of indirect overhead lighting. And so the lighting on the faces is... Um, when they're indoors anyway, like, especially the scene with the shards of Narsil where Arwen and, um, Aragorn, uh, are talking, um, and Boromir earlier. Uh, that's a good one because the lighting on Arwen's face shows you where face highlights should be placed perfectly. Um, and then, uh, just watching the one ring, the armor, the, the swords, you know, you can really get a feel for NMM, just kind of study it until it clicks. Um, so those are all great movies and, you know, The Hobbit, of course, being done by, you know, do, it's produced by the same person, directed by the same person, uses the same sort of tricks. So they're all great, uh, subjects to watch if you're trying to have, uh, also for leather. So, so yeah, I totally agree with that one. Good morning or afternoon, uh, Sandra Cleese and Stephen. And Planer, good. Hey, Planer, Justin said you have to ride herd on us today because he has a meeting, so he's actually not on stream. So if somebody is naughty and we need modding, you get to get out the spoon. So uh, just just to let you know, because uh, we are Justinless until the end of the stream. And I may even have to text him to get his butt up here to end the stream. So we'll see. We'll see. He wasn't sure how long the meeting is going to last. All right, guys, well, let's get into it. Let's, let's actually get painting. Yes, yeah, yeah, spoons. All right, the spoon is here. Um, hey, what do we got? Yay, Night Heart Gaming sponsored. Thank you. That's what uh, Darth Epic Spot says. Alrighty, so spoons and razor mouths. He's so cute. How could you not want to paint him? He's adorbs. Oh, look, I missed a mold line on his tooth. Well, let's get that off. That's definitely a mold line that needs a knife. We're doing some dentistry just very quickly because that mold line annoys me. Don't be alarmed because my knife is dull, so and I'm using very light pressure, so I would have to really, really work to get this to actually cut my thumb. But we need to definitely trim down his tooth there. He had some serious uh, bad mold line issues there. This one has one too. Of course, I never noticed these things till I'm actually on camera, and then I'm like, well, guess you guys get to see me clean a mold line off of a tooth. Do dentistry on a razor mouth. Today's lesson is dentistry on monsters. Alrighty. Yay, he's so adorbs. If we use to have we get cookies. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much naughtiness we could really get into. We are a pretty awesome bunch, um, so we are not known for totally misbehaving. Alright, so let's talk about this seems like a great model for me to talk about teeth. Um, and claws and stuff. Oh my. Um, obviously he has a lot of teeth and uh, his claws are nice and sharp. Oh, more, more mold lines. We might just do the teeth today. Um, one thing I was also thinking is that we could also work on his scales, but I want, I want uh, for that maybe tomorrow, I would want you guys to give me like a color that you have a lot of difficulty with that you'd like to see me work with on the scales. So think about that throughout the screen a stream and then uh, I'll ask again at the end and y'all can shout out colors that you like but that you have difficulty using and uh, maybe even ones that don't have a triad or the triad is like hard to use 
stuff like that. But for today, oh no, he's got mold line on his butt. Poor beast. Oh no, mold lines on the butt are the worst. Kiri could tell you that. All right, so yeah, and if I have to run out for the uh, for a, a dog emergency, um, a Kiri emergency, uh, you guys will have to entertain yourselves for a little bit. So let's hope she sleeps through this. So this is Razor Mouth. There's his item number. He's a cutie. He just wants to be friends. Hey, Nomadzy. Alrighty. Hey, Jenky. Yeah, Nathophile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I really came to the end of what I could demo on the Spirit Beast. So what I've got here, guys, is, um, is brown liner. And, uh, for all of your teeth, and I see, uh, beginning painters, uh, make this mistake a lot, but whenever you're doing, especially teeth, and you want them to stand out, doing a dark wash over them or, or painting them dark to begin with is a very good idea because you don't want, once you have your teeth, um, in there, you don't want to have to be in the position of trying to paint a thin, dark line between the teeth and the skin or the gums. And honestly, that's what you want for your teeth to stand out. You need that thin, dark line. So the easy way around that is just to do a wash. Let's see how thick it is. Yeah, pretty thick. I'm going to throw more water in it. Um, I chose brown liner so that we could get maybe a little bit of transparency growing, going on here, but that it would still stick. So let's see. This is about, um, six drops of brown liner to two drops of water and, uh, three drops of brush on sealer. And if you recall what the brush on sealer does for you, is that it makes the paint more transparent without making it watery. So this allows you to get kind of a heavy wash effect without, um, hold on. Okay, planer, that's cool. You don't have to, but hopefully, hopefully she'll sleep through it. Um, glad you had a good time with this model, Otter Mama. I, I'm planning to have a good time with it. I'm gonna put one more drop of brush on sealer in there. I want a little more transparency on this. Um, the reason that the brush on sealer is very useful when you're going over base bones where you don't have a base coat um, at all, where you haven't primed it, because I never prime my bones, is uh, that essentially whenever you put too much water, you know, and you remember, it won't work very well over the top of um, the bones plastic. But when you add brush on sealer, you are adding more base to the paint so you can get a more transparent um, effect. Uh, but it still has good body. You haven't uh, watered it down immensely. So I'm just going to try to hit all of these little teeths. And I'll come at it from the underside as well. Don't really care if I get it all over at the top of his mouth because I, obviously I haven't painted yet, so painted it yet, so it doesn't matter. I can always paint over it. I just want all of these teeth to stand out. And so that's why you want a dark line around your teeth. You want them to stand out, be all shiny. More little teeth there. So instead of lining, just paint them dark to begin with. That way, yeah, we can see the plastic coming out a little bit through that, a little bit better on that side. Doesn't really matter. Uh, most, okay, Astro Squee, if it's a matte medium, um, then it's probably similar, but if it is a, at all glossy or a glazing medium, then it's probably not meant to do this. Um, so it, uh, it depends, right? You may have to, you may have to, uh, you, uh, the best thing would be to just ask your local GW guy, you know, what's this for? Um, and what's the point? Does it build washes? If it's meant to build washes, then it probably is great. If you know if it's meant to build washes. Hey, Image of Betrayal, thank you for the sub. Two months, yay. Um, it depends. Mathophile, usually I don't see uneven. Do you mean, okay, so by uneven, do you mean globbing up or do you mean that it's not covering? That's what I need to know. Because uneven paint coverage could be either of those. So what do you what do you mean by uneven paint coverage? Yay, Critico with the more sub a whole year. Yeah, well, about my speed too, Critico. <laughs> ah, thank you all for your subs. And Robin did too. Awesome. It says it thins down their washes. 
Oh. Maybe? Try it. If it, it's probably a wash medium, it may have both water and uh, base in it, but since their washes have a certain consistency anyway, I bet it's probably base. I, it should work then. It should work. I mean, always test because, you know, I can't swear to another um, company's paint because I haven't used it. Um, so maybe I'll pick up a bottle and play with it. Lamy in a medium, huh? And official Taz Lynch has also subscribed for 13, 13 months. Wow, lucky number. Not fully covering, looks like a dirty wash. Yeah, you need more paint math, pal. Usually for base coats, I will do like a, uh, between a four to one and a six to one paint to water. So it really only needs a little bit of thinning. All right, we've got our teeth. And I would do this same kind of thing on the claws. Either, actually, usually with claws, I won't bother with a wash. Teeth, the wash is useful because you've got, especially with his mouth, where he's got so many crowded, overlapping teeth. So the wash is useful to kind of separate them out from each other, um, in addition to leaving the dark line. On the claws, since they're all separated and there's no overlap, you don't really need to put a wash. You could just paint them dark. Often I'll paint claws in walnut. Um, just to make them. And again, that's because you want that dark line between where it comes out of the paw and, uh, and the claw itself. And it's very hard to draw that line after you've painted everything. So it's just easier to just paint it dark. And then when you start to highlight the claw, just leave a little bit in the crack. Oh, yay. Astro squeeze. Wow. We have serious subs now. Um, we have, we're, we're also like a level one hype train because of all the subs. Wow, you guys. Hype train, ask her squee. Thank you for gifting all those subs. That's super. You guys are so awesome. All right, so now we got to wait a little bit for it to dry. So let's talk colors. I may experiment with something today because I was thinking of making some really dirty mouth, uh, dirty, dirty teeth. Let's see here. What color would be good for that? I think rich leather might be a good good uh, color for that. And maybe I'll need some yellow because bad teeth are really yellowy. I think I'm going to try to use lantern for that. And then uh, my usual teeth color is going to be the ivory triad. So let's see if I can dig out my stained ivory and my creamy ivory. And then my highest color on teeth is, of course, white. And sometimes you'd go off white. Usually, um, let's see what I got. I got linen white. Let's rock it. Look at you guys. You're just crazy awesome. Gonna be lurking, Crispies? That's cool. I'm doing teeth. We're doing big teeth on the big on the uh, razor mouth. So we're having fun today with with big big toothy smile on the razor mouth. All right. Now, it is worth saying that at, um, before I started on these teeth, I might well have painted the inside of his mouth normally. Um, it would mostly just because it it's, gets it out of the way. And uh, remember that often the tactic with painting is to start in and then work out. And since his face is all teeth um, and mouth, the in would be probably his mouth. So normally I would have painted the gums uh, and the interior here. And then I would have worked out to the teeth and then I would work back from there. But since we're in about teeth today and I didn't have time to pre-prep, um, we are just dealing with teeth. Oh, thank you. Now we're on a level two hype train. That's fantastic. Thanks for the gift sub to get us there, uh, planer. All right. Often, often, mathophile. However, I mean, when they get older, they uh, definitely have yellowed teeth at that point. Um, like my old dog can tell you. But uh, this is also a monster, so you, you can never assume he gets good dental work. <laughs> I don't know if you could chew bones with a mouth uh, like that, because usually it's gnawing on bone that cleans the teeth. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a very big mouth and a very awkward opening, so I'm not quite sure how he closes his mouth. Maybe he just wanders around with his mouth open all the time, constantly talking. 
Yeah, I always use the ivories. Like uh, these are my favorites, um, pretty much. I guess not always. If I'm if I'm working with a very um, muted color scheme, a very gray color scheme, I'll actually use the original bone triad, uh, aged bone, polished bone, um, because then I want a a, more, a less vivid um, color for my teeth. But if I'm going to try to do yellowed teeth, especially yellowed toward the root, then I need to work probably with a yellower white, and so that's why. Or he's a filter feeder. You never know. Maybe he's just a friendly, you know, maybe he just eats plankton and doesn't nom on people at all. I like that idea, Fendrake. Cool planer. Yeah, we're saving up. I'm, uh, I'm actually formulating, uh, good afternoon, Gridlock. Um, I'm putting together a, a big giveaway, uh, thing for when we hit a certain number of subs. I think Justin and I had said 60. But he's been keeping track, and now he's not here, so he can't tell us how close we are. But essentially, that'll be our new AMA level. But in addition to the AMA, we'll also do a day of giveaways. Oh, and speaking of special things, remember remember that my wonderful boyfriend, David Diamondstone, who is a fantastic painter, um, is going to be guesting on here this week, on Friday, guys. He's going to be talking about NMM, and he's very, very good at it, so you should totally tune in. Uh, he paints totally different style from me. So this will be a, this will very much be a very different kind of stream. He is, uh, working on Trista, the white wolf. And, uh, he's, uh, already built an elaborate base for her. Um, which you guys are going to love to see. And I did ask him to take some work in progress shots while he was building it. So he may, may even do a blog entry of how he constructed it. Um, so we'll see. We'll have to keep pestering him about that. Yes, I don't know. He had a call this morning, so I'm not sure if he's watching today, uh, Planer. But if we see um, Alfai um, pop in, we will know that he is here. So, yes. All right. So, I've got two drops. And I'm just guessing here because I actually haven't done this. But we're going to start with this and work out. So, we've got rich leather and we've got lantern yellow. Um, and I want, you know, I want that kind of ucky brown gooey, gooey look at the bottom of the teeth. So, I thought that this would be a good start. Um, I've got the one, one drop lantern yellow, two drops of the rich leather, and I'm going to kind of dab it onto the teeth to see what I got. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he could be uh, just a tasty morsel for other predators. This is this is a true mathophile. We're definitely painting a different uh, picture of this monster than uh, Reaper probably intended, but, you know, it doesn't matter. We can make our monster anything we want. He could be a happy little pet. So I'm going to start out with my globby yellow. Maybe he is a herbivore, and then we can make his teeth all yellow. And really, you just want to dab on your uh, your base uh, yellowy brown and uh, leave your really dark brown just in the cracks. You This color, this, this wicked, ucky, yellowy brown color is the color we're going to leave near the root of the teeth because that's usually the brownish, the brownest. Um, in teeth that are old and yellowed. Since, of course, if they're chewing on bones or whatever, they're mostly hitting the uh, that, um, top edges of the teeth. Yeah. yeah, he might eat little critters himself and then get preyed on at the file. That's totally useful. And Plater would like us, everybody to know that if we get to 20 subs today, she will be personally giving a gift certificate away. Yeah, technically he does have eyeballs on the side of his head, so good point, good point. You guys are like way too, oh, hype train success, dear me. We have a banner. Ah, uh, let's see here. <laughs> I thought the spike, spiky bits mean dire. <laughs> okay, so let me see here. Do, do, do. One second, you guys are talking a lot this morning. Um, the mix is two drops of rich leather, 9429, and one drop of lantern yellow, uh, 9407 and putting that over a dark base coat so it actually takes it down it would it would be very yellowy if you put it over a light base coat oh no he has a little tooth on his tooth I'm pretty sure that's a miscast we're gonna have to take that off little guy hold on more dentistry I didn't catch that earlier there all right he's like oh no let's see but there you can see how the color changes if I do it over the light gray instead of over the dark, right? So this now it takes it to very yellowy orange, which is very different from um, from a rotting tooth look. So 
That's why we're going over this dark base coat that we set up instead of painting the teeth white and then applying a yellowy color. I probably should look up dirty teeth, you know, but that would gross me out. So I'm just going to go by memory <laughs> on this one. Normally, as with anything, if you want um, something to look right and it's a natural effect, you should always look up photo references. But Anne gets grossed out by pictures of rotting teeth. And so I'm going to pass today and I'm just going to do my um, dirty monster teeth the way I want to do them. And that's it. The world is vibrating. If you don't know, if you know, okay. If the world's not vibrating, you haven't had enough caffeine. Oh yes, and thank you, Planer, for the plug. Uh, Planer, uh, Planer has plugged my Patreon. Hey, we have a lot of alliteration. I like that. All right, so um, the dealio is that I have a Patreon, and many of you are already my supporters, and I am so grateful, guys, because it really is. It's like my my lifeline right now. It's my main source of income since I moved away from Texas. Um, and I'm so pleased we're back almost, uh, we lost a few people to, to COVID, which is totally understandable. You know, everybody's, there's a lot of financial hardship out there. Um, people are, are definitely tuning back even if they don't, you know, even if they stop jobs. So, but now we've almost recovered and we're almost back up at, um, our previous level. And so then we can hit a record and make me happy. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for being my patrons. For those of you who already are. And for those who are not, it is uh, patreon.com slash painting big if you want to take a look at it. I had, do have some free content up there um, that you can look at just for fun uh, to see if you like my style. There's the random color scheme generator, which is fun. Uh, the random color scheme encounter table is the official name. Uh, and then uh, there's a couple of other older videos. I think I did a painting eyes video and uh, stuff like that just to give you guys a taste of how I run. Um, and mostly uh, it's uh, it's videos and PDFs. And I also do often do companion PDFs for some of the higher levels. My goal is to always do a companion PDF for the $10 level. I'm just trying to get everything ironed out and trying to get enough content for everybody. But there is also a ton of content from 2019. Uh, and if you go to around New Year's this year, you'll see that I actually posted up a list of all the content from 2019. So you can get an idea if any of it interests you. So thank you. That has been your official plug for the Ann. I could have tooth decay, but I don't because I go to the dentist. I don't know if this monster has access to a dentist. I don't know if monster dental plans, you know, are a thing. I mean, if he was a pet, then he could have pet insurance and go to the dentist. I guess he could go to the dentist anyway and his owner could, his, uh, owner could just pay out of pocket. I don't know if they have uh, monster dentists in fantasy worlds. There should be though. That should be like an NPC somewhere. There need to be monster dentists. Because really, monsters totally need dental work, I bet. They regularly break teeth. I'm liking this whimsical idea of the monster dentist. He'd have to be pretty hardcore to work on some of these monsters. Alrighty, just getting all of our little teeth. Side job for a druid. There are so many minis Reaper could make. That's the problem, right? It's like, there are so many minis you can make and you can make any mini in the world. What would you make? So, you know, lots of things we don't get to just because we're busy doing other things. That's what the Bones Kickstarters are good for. Sometimes it lets us kind of like put out a mini that we weren't sure about that then, uh, you know, does really well or doesn't. It lets us uh, try ideas for various things. It sounds like a play set, the Monster Veterinary Clinic. Why does Barbie not do that, huh? Because Barbie could be so much cooler if she just embraced D and D, just saying. Alrighty, yellowy claws. I know, Sadiki. Actually, um, this is not at all um, close to uh, what you thought here. But remember the. 
the camera may be a little off, but that looks about right on my monitor. This is two drops of rich leather and one drop of lantern yellow because dirty teeth at the, at the root tend to yellow out badly. Um, so I'm using a very yellowish brown to start with and then uh, one that I think is pretty close to the color that I'm looking for and then lantern yellow to punch that up a notch. And since we're putting it over a dark base coat, it's not terribly bright. Um, if I was putting it over this this coat, it would look a lot um, a lot brighter if I was putting it over over this stuff. So that's something to keep in mind is the what base coat you're working with. But yeah, I mean any brown, but um, I'm used to seeing uh, dirty teeth and rotting teeth go very yellow. So that being the case, I thought we would punch it up with Mr. Monster's mouth and make it very yellow. I know, a nerd Barbie, right? Why have they not done nerd Barbie, Astro Squee? I don't get it. Like, I'm very, very angry. I mean, I've never liked the Barbie people anyway because I was totally not a Barbie fan as a child um, because it was very one-dimensional and not uh, cool. But, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm old. So, like, you know, if I didn't like Barbie, like, she was already out of date when it was my time. Silly Barbie. Just encourages all the wrong stereotypes, in my opinion. All right. I think we're good. We're good, we're good. Yep, there we are. We have yellowy, awful teeth. He's so unhappy right now. Yep, yeah, you can still have nerd, nerd Barbie. Taz Lynch. Oh, awesome. You gave her tattoos? Well, Arby, she, Barbie automatically got cooler with that. All right, so now let's get our teeth coming up here. Let's, uh, I don't know if I want to use stained ivory, though. It's very brown. I think I want to go up, because anything that's not really, really gooky is going to be a lot lighter, probably pretty quick, because they, they would be the teeth that he uses to eat, so they're polished up, um, or the edges, rather, the part of the tooth that he eats with. So I think I'm going to go straight to creamy ivory instead of going with to stained ivory, which is a bit more brown. So we'll do four drops of that. And I want to be able, I want to be able to layer these over the top of each other without a problem. And so we're going to take a brush full of this and we're going to mix it into this color. And essentially that's going to make our two colors work together a lot better. And you guys have heard me talk about this before, but it is so very true that if you are trying to blend one color into another, no matter how different they are, Mixing a bit of one into the other will give you a bridging color that will help things. And how much of a bridging color you want is up to you. Like, I could take a brush full of this and put it into this and get another bridging color. And then I'd have two. So I could start with this one. And then I could go to that one and uh, get a nice blend if I wanted to. Hello, Skyrus. Oh, it's all good, Skyrus. It's all good. We understand financial hardship here. We get it. We understand that we cannot all throw money at things we really want to. Uh, oh, briar horses are so pretty. Evil mathematician action figure. Why don't they make that, Mathophile? Yeah, that's true, D. Clearman. You do have a point. It will look like Barbie, but it would be a step in the right direction, right? Like, I want her, uh, goth Barbie would also be a good one, actually. Hey, O'Coral. Well, thank you. Thank you for the resub there. Tier one for seven months. Lucky number seven. All right, so let's start. And we're going to go out. We want his teeth to look really, really dirty down near the roots. So we're going to go out probably about halfway. And I'm going to stripe. Oh, everybody was saying thank you to you earlier. My, uh, my boyfriend has entered the office, everybody. Hopefully the Kiri does not wake up. But I uh, guess everybody says thank you for doing the stream this Friday. They're very much looking forward to it. He's giving me the thumbs up. I told them all. I threatened them all with dire consequences if they didn't watch it. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're discussing how Barbie needs to be a nerd. But, but, um, yeah. I saw a little of the stream before. I oh, okay. All right. Cool. He does need to see a dentist, O'Carroll. Exactly. So I'm going to kind of go at it this way because I want it to blend in a little bit toward the base. Um, and by starting my stroke halfway down the tooth and pulling it out, I'm, you know, I'm not putting down very much paint here. And then it's much thicker 
down toward the end of the tooth where I want it to be lighter. And I'm starting with this mixture that I just did of my starting um, two drops of rich leather, one drop of lantern yellow, and then I put a brush full of the creamy ivory mixture in there. Creamy ivory being 9144. Um, and uh, the purpose of this is just to create bridging colors between the dark brown, brownish yellow that I started with and the ivory and the linen white that I want to come up to. So, I, uh, so if you want to blend it, that's the way to do it. And you could also do striation type of teeth, which actually I tend to do this more on claws. So let's, let's go down and do that on the claw. So what I tend to do there is I wouldn't use so much of a bridging color. And by striations, I mean, um, I, often claws will have kind of these stripes, right? On the, there we go. So you would start by making tiny stripes. And in this case, you don't want it to blend in so much because you want to see the stripes. So if you want to do those claws that kind of start dark and then stripe out light without the blend, then you wouldn't do as much bridging color. And you'd want to take the claw back toward the, still leave a dark, uh, dark um, root on your claw, but make the, uh, the last half of it um, pretty light. So that's the way I like to do claws is with that stripey kind of thing going on. Oh, <laughs> you have to understand this is not seven months straight. That's fine. We're good. We thank you. Subs, a sub for the show is a, is a vote for the show is what I always say. So if you enjoy the show, by all means, throw a sub at it eventually sometime. Um, and every sub is just a sign to the bosses that we need to keep doing my show. Punk emo Barbie. That would be cool. Yeah, I mean, you could go to me so many ways with, uh, with, with nerd goth Barbie, right? Like, we could just keep going here. Now somebody, I'm sure that somebody's modded one. Like, you know, people who do those doll mods. Um, which who really are sometimes very, very talented. Um... I've got way too much paint on my brush. Uh, smaller mouths and smaller teeth. Yes. Um, yeah, you would totally, actually, absolutely do the same thing, monosyllabic monk. You would do the wash to bring out the teeth, and then you would paint the teeth up. Um, the reason is really, I mean, you want the teeth to stand out, and a lot of people I see make the mistake of, of not doing the lining, not having that line between um, the mouth edge and the teeth. You can see even with very little highlights on it, how well that dark line really makes these teeth stand out, even though I haven't highlighted them much at all. So if you want an ogre or something to have this sort of teeth also, or even a, you know, a smaller monster with smaller mouth, smaller teeth, if you want your teeth to stand out, you need that dark line. And so you may as well paint them dark up front and then put your dab of ivory or white or whatever you're doing on top of them. Uh, it's going to make them stand out a lot better. Let's see here. Oh yeah, and that's a good, uh, actually a good um, remain reminder there, official Taz Lynch. Thank you for those of you who have a Prime M or have an Amazon Prime account. You actually get a free Twitch sub every month. You can throw it at whoever you like. The only downside to it is that you have to remember to resubscribe. It does not auto resubscribe. Although well, somebody told me that there was a functionality for that now, but I didn't look into it. Um, but yeah, so you essentially can can toss a free Twitch sub. Twitch Prime sub that you don't even have to pay for. It's just, you know, something you get for free with your uh, Amazon Prime account. So even if you don't have money, you might be able to sub. <clears throat> yeah, no problem, Monosyllabic Monk. Yeah, I really, I really find that that's one of the things that um, the lining around details is one of the things that um, painters who are starting out uh, aren't told right away. Or just it's not, you know, they don't think about it because they haven't encountered lining and stuff yet. But putting that dark shadow at the root of a small detail like this really does make it stand out. So I'm coming back and I'm highlighting my teeth. I may want them to go yellower. I haven't yet decided. I'm going to see how this kind of comes out. I am kind of liking this very organic kind of bony yellow color I've got going on here. It's a very good, a pretty good ivory color. 
And I'm just going to dab, just get the teeth. You don't have to be real uh, precise here except to hit the tooth. If you mess up, you can grab your dark color, your brown liner, and just line um, over where you screwed up. It's not a big deal. Never get stressed about painting. It should be enjoyable. You can always fix it, guys. Alrighty. This mini yeah, yeah, he could be a hungry teenage monster. That would explain it. In which case, his mom badly needs to get him to a dentist. Let's do more striations down here. Often, dragon claws and claws on bigger monsters will have this sort of striation sculpted in, where there's a root to the claw, and there are ridges coming out from it. And so that's kind of what you're simulating here on a smaller monster. And the reason to do it, if you want to, I mean, you could just paint these solid like the teeth. The reason to do it is just to add a little bit of extra detail. So it's purely a personal preference thing. Hey, Achilles Blade. Yep, yep, yep. Um, actually, I, this isn't black, uh, Mathophile. It's actually brown liner, so it's a dark brown. I never use pure black, pure black for lining unless I'm working with um, a gray. If I'm working with a gray color, then black is okay. And even then, I usually will use walnut or brown liner. I won't use... Uh, I will not use pure black. Um, and yeah, you could just mix these two and add like some walnut to them. Although be, be wary, Mathophile, of color shift if you do that. Because remember, adding this is so much yellow that any color that you add to these that has a lot of black in it, which would be the reason, you know, obviously if you're going to take it down really dark, then you're going to be doing that. Uh, it will shift green. So your, your base lining color will then be greenish. Uh, because you've got that black pigment and yellow pigment interaction, and that's just the way it rolls. So if you want to do a dark variation of these colors, I honestly would just like reach for a already dark brown. Um, unless you want it green, then go for it. Ocarol, I'm not sure. Uh, let me see, Jacksonville? I don't think so. I may have driven through it like a long time ago, but uh, I don't get... I don't get down there. Or Jacksonville, F Florida, right? Am I right on that? I was at Florida in Florida recently, like last last year, last year, uh, to visit my uncle briefly. But it was like three days, mostly in Orlando and Fort Myers. So I don't think I actually went to Jacksonville. So it's probably that I just have a clone. I have been told that I have clones around the country, which scares me actually. We really only need one of me. I'm going to thin this down. I don't have a lot of paint in this puddle, and so I'm having to add water to it more frequently. If you're using a well palette like I am, you're going to get a lot more mileage if you build deep paint puddles. And by deep, I mean at least six drops of paint plus water and whatever else you're using to thin it with mediums or such. This one had a lot less. Remember, we started with only two drops of rich leather and one of the yellow. And then I added maybe just one brushful or drop of the ivory. So this, because it only has four drops in it, it's drying out faster. The way to get mileage out of a well palette is to build deeper wells. And that way your paint stays wet at the right consistency for a long time. Oh, 10 years ago? No, it wouldn't have been then. Would have been my clone. Well, good. Awesome, Mathophile. I'm glad you started painting. What are you painting for your first Reaper model with MSP? I'm going to be painting out the bottom of the teeth now. Two-handed axe cross giant. Oh, okay, yeah. The giants are awesome. Alrighty, and we can leave the bottom side of these bottom teeth dark uh, because obviously they're really close to the ground and they're in shadow. So I put my first uh, color on there, the original two drops of rich leather, one drop of uh, 
lantern yellow, but then I wouldn't do anything else to these underside teeth because they're just, they're going to be in shadow. They're so close to the ground. And if you base him on a bigger base, nobody's going to be even able to see them. So you don't want to do too much. Good, 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 Manthophile. Yeah, frost giants are fun to paint. I like their intrinsic color schemes. Obviously, since I have Ms. Frost Giant Queen over here, who is still waiting for me to like mop, uh, uh, block out her uh, OS, uh, her ugh, her lighting, her zenith, fix her zenith all lighting, which is all speckly still from Primer. Ah, sit, stay. She's grumpy because she hasn't been worked on for a while. She would like me to do another Terrain Tuesday tomorrow and work on her back backdrop. Yes, this does have, I, this is why I wanted to do this one for teeth. So now let's grab some of our, remember, this is almost all creamy ivory, but it's got a little bit of this yellow and brown mix in it. So by layering these up, we're able to get a blended effect on the, t the big teeth. And this is very useful also on dragon teeth or dragon turtle teeth or anything that has large dentition that you want to have something more than just painted ivory. Um, So now since we're getting to the tips of the teeth, I'm going to bring them up brighter. And notice how nicely they stick out now um, between the dark shadow here and the, and this uh, and the bringing it up to quite a bright highlight at this point. You could also, if you wanted these teeth to be wet, apply a gloss after you were done and do uh, drippy saliva. I suppose I could try to try to do that effect for you guys. There are ways to do, there are all sorts of ways to do it. I find it to be a bit um, overdone most times, as far as the drippy strings of saliva. But, you know, some people like it. I've got some teeths. Oh, the crocodile? No, no. I decided to, to be gentler to my Minis Max styles. When I moved, I did not bring the crocodile. Um, I, uh, got rid of or gave away a bunch of models before I left so that I would, anything I didn't feel like really excited about so that I would, uh, minimize my chances of having models that were, uh, misbehaving in the future. Usually when I get into trouble with a mini and I really don't like it, it's a model that I wasn't too excited about in the, in the first place. So there we go. We got some nice nice stuff coming out here. He's, he needs highlights on this side of his big long tooth there. Um, I don't know, Twistoma. It depends. Like, it depends on really if I wanted, uh, you know, obviously if I was trying to do this mini for competition, I'd have more time to work on the blending and the patterning and make them look a little bit neater. It's a little different when you're trying to get it done on stream. But yeah, you could totally do um, a final glaze, especially if you feel, for example, that you've brought the teeth up too much and you want them more yellow. So at that point, a glaze uh, with the yellowish brown would not be out of order at all. Now, it would totally take them very yellow, so you might have to watch it. Uh, you could also do a glaze with the light color if you decided you didn't want as much uh, dark yellowy brown as you have. So that you could, you could take, do a wash or glaze. Uh, washes I don't usually use to even out color. I use glazes, which are uh, much thinner than a wash, just to also make that uh, distinction. Washes, uh, in my mind, are a shading tool because you're letting them pool. But I don't really need more pooling on these teeth. I've left a lot of the dark original color in between the teeth, so I don't really need that. Um, if I needed to uh, disguise layering or even out color, then I would use a glaze, which is much thinner and you don't let it pool. You just use it to, as you say, to blend the layers. There we go, sharp teeth. Let's see here. Hello, Serge. I don't know if I've seen you before, Serge, for. But hello. 
If you are new, welcome. If you are not new and a previous lurker, welcome anyway. We are painting some teeth. So let's see. Maybe I do want to go more yellowy. They've got a, they've gotten a bit brown, and I've lost my yellowy look. So, yeah, yeah. So let's do that, actually. Let's do a yellowy glaze on these teeth. And let's kind of invert the original, because I haven't gone up to pure white yet. So we'll see how we how this does. It may go way yellow. So let's go do two drops of the lantern yellow and one drop of the rich leather. See what color that gives us and if I think that's way too yellow. And again, if you're uh, if you're good, if you're if you're better than me and you look up uh, a photo example of yellowed teeth, um, you could uh, try to hit the color that you see instead of going on guesswork like I am. Memories of bad teeth. Technically, Kiri has kind of yellowy teeth at this point because she's an old dog. Yeah, that's way too yellow, I think. Hmm. Well, but it's going to be a glaze. A glaze is just going to give me a hint because a glaze is going to be really thin. So right away, one to one. Let's start with one to one. Glazes usually are more like a two or three to one uh, water to paint. Really, really thin. Yeah, I see how thick that really is here. That's still really, really thick. So when you're doing a glaze... Let's go even further. Let's grab a blob of this, put it over there, put another drop of water in it. That'll take it there, down even further. You want it to be colored water. That's a lot better. Like that's really, it's just gonna kind of, kind of give you that hint of yellow to yellow out the teeth a little bit more. So let's do that. And I'm just gonna apply it over all of this very quickly with a big brush. And then I'm gonna come back and wick off any excess that I've got, if I have anything pooling, I don't want that. I can also just have just very little of this on my brush and very gently brush it over and not let it pool just straight out the gate. If you, uh, you can paint on glazes like this. You don't have to um, you know, risk letting them pool and just paint them on straight. And we're gonna get these little teeths and little teeths on the bottom. Kind of dab on the glaze, then you don't have to worry about the pooling. That's pretty good. Oh, that's nice and yellow. Rawr. And it has the side effect of evening out my layers. Which is nice. Yeah, and it, it gives me that yellow back that I was kind of missing. And if I really want even more, I can take this initial color that I mixed and then use to make the glaze. And I can kind of dab some of that full strength on over this brown and maybe yellow it out a lot. Let's see. What happens when I mix it with creamy ivory? I bet it goes really, really yellow. I miss this tooth up here. There. All right, so he's coming along with his big mouth of teeth. I totally missed his little claw down here, though. All right, have fun. Thanks for tuning in, Valandar. We'll see you next time. Get most of my paint off my brush because I want, uh, if I'm doing those thin little lines, I need to have most of the paint off of my brush. Otherwise, I won't have control and I won't be able to paint these thin little lines. There. Much nicer. Ooh, there we go. All right. Rawr. Hey there, Clever, what's up? That's coming along pretty nicely. Let's do some shinier tips on his teeth with linen white. So for things like teeth that really don't go up to pure white, unless they're, um, they're all wet and shiny, uh, in which case, by all means, go up to pure white. Um, then in white is usually as far, as far as I go. And if I want some shine on them, I could also, like I said, use gloss. The only time you really don't want to use a gloss sealer for an effect is if you have um, NMM on a model, in which case you're, you've pretty much committed to creating the illusion of shiny. Um, and if you try to put actual shiny on it at that point, it will not look great. One or the other won't look great.
So we've got our happy little linen white. We can do some very tips of the teeth. Just a little bit. This may not be thin enough. Let me see. I want it to be thin. I don't want to put a big blob of linen white on the end of all these teeth that I've actually spent some time blending. So let's make sure that we, and remember the lighter the color, the more water you have to add to get it to go translucent. So you do remember that. So let's see. Yeah, that's, that's decent. That gives me a little bit of light edging on the tooth make it stand out. Let's go up and get this guy. These teeth are pretty rough. It would hurt to get bit by this guy. Though I do like the uh, idea of him as a plankton feeder, so you know, maybe we'll go with that. Chat decided that this was an herbivore, David rather than a carnivore. No, no, no. Pokey teeth equals carnivore. No, but Black he has teeth equals herbivore. No, but he has eyes on the side of his mouth and you don't know that he actually uses his teeth to bite things. They thought maybe he was um, a plankton eater because he has his mouth stretched out wide. But, but pokey teeth. <laughs> but eyes on the side and and spikes on top of him so he gets preyed on. I mean, he could also eat things I he mean, gets preyed he on. I mean, clearly looks around. Maybe he's a scavenger and so that's oh. why he's looking around. But like, those are not the right teeth for eating plants. <laughs> All teeth, no bite. Let's hope he doesn't bite us. It looks like it would hurt. Okay, David says definitely scavenging carnivore, guys. Sorry. Sorry for your eyes on the side of the head. I think maybe the, whoever said he was a teenage monster is right, and he's just like a juvenile, and he's going to evolve into a much nastier carnivore, maybe with his eyes forward, but uh, right now he's a little more than a tadpole with legs. And a mean attitude. I think he's cute, and I think he would be totally fun to run as a custom monster. Make up some stat line for him. Could have the, uh, you know... The guy who hires you to go after him go, oh, it's just a gigantic tadpole. And then you get this. You're like, what? Yeah. Got some nice sharp teeth on him now. Rawr. Rawr. Oh, get in focus. Rawr. Hey, Sidestorm. Thank you. Nine months. Awesome. Maybe when his mouth is shut, the eyes are more forward, like he actually deforms his skull. That's possible. Maybe the eyes shift backwards to protect them. That's good. I love how we're trying to figure out the, the zoology of this creature. Ah, uh, that's true. We could go with the horizontal pupils or vertical uh, or round. Bill Robertson, since, you know, many predators have round pupils. I don't know. I don't know. I think I like the juvenile carnivore, carnivore monster who isn't fully evolved yet and into his final form. So he's a Pokemon? Yeah. He, of course. Doesn't he look like a Pokemon to you? Why do you think I like him so much? <laughs> David is like, this is true. Thank you, by the way, everybody who friended me on Pokemon Go. And for those who play Go and who haven't noticed on our Reaper Discord, we have a Pokemon Friends channel. And uh, we all gave our, uh, our IDs, so if you need more Pokemon friends, go ahead, join the channel. Friend us. We can all send each other presents. Hi, Spitzadoma. <laughs> yes, the peanut gallery has arrived. <laughs> That's okay. When he's on, I get to peanut gallery him. I'll probably write her on chat, since he'll probably be painting and not necessarily watching chat as much. I have, I've gotten in the habit of checking chat regularly. I could have painted it that way, Okarol. I could have. I could have. But but I needed a teeth example, and this guy seems to be, like, it seemed to me to be an awesome teeth model. I like Okarol's theory. The reason he has such huge teeth is not for eating things. It's like a, a display. Oh, yeah. To attract a mate, like, 
the he with the craziest teeth gets the gets the girl. Yeah, there's there's evolutionary theory that backs up that you know things that encumber your fitness can be effective mating um, coloration and help attract mates. Things that encumber your fitness, like being a computer geek. Like excessively large um, tails. <laughs> well, we have no tail here. In fact, we are just, he has the dreaded butt mold line, sadly. Probably doesn't hamper, hamper his fitness, but it definitely makes him uh, sad. There we go. We've got some nice striated, striated claws. See those nice stripies? It helps to make them more interesting, just because claws otherwise can be pretty boring things. Oh yeah, it can scare off predators. Yep, yep. <laughs> Not making a comment for the mating on the mating plumage thing because I don't want to get banned. <laughs> Smart man. Yeah, because Planer was told she gets the spoon today. Like Justin is not in the building. Well, okay, he's in the building. He's not in the room. Um, oh, so told you're hubby that today's a good day to say things that would otherwise get you banned. No, because Planer will be after you, and you don't want to get banned before you do your stream. Um, Twistedoma told Hubby about possible Wild WoW Reaper Guild. He said, start one and he, daughter, and son will be there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that's the, uh... Ah, energy cost of a feature, Mathophile. Yes, that's what David is talking about. You and David would probably get along, Mathophile, since you're a Mathophile. Uh, but, uh... But yeah, we were talking about doing a Reaper Wild Guild the other day, David. I don't remember if you were on for that. I don't think I was. Yeah, because that way, that way, all of us who go back to play um, Shadowlands uh, can have a guild. If if our old guilds like mine, all my old uh, friends who used to play don't play anymore, so my old guilds are all defunct. But I still like to have a guild so that we can do instances easily. The energy cost of a feature. Well, what do you think the energy cost are is of gigantic? teeth he looks pretty cool all right guys so we're getting toward the end here and i'll probably uh text uh justin in a moment to uh let him know that we're getting there but uh remember when i started the stream i said for his scales i'd like to tackle a color that you guys think is hard to use but that you still like maybe even a color that doesn't have a triad um and uh then i can do that on his scales and body tomorrow so I am looking for a couple of color suggestions. Let me grab a sticky note quick so I can write them down. A couple of color suggestions for colors that you like but have trouble using that you would like me to demo on the body of this model. Specific model, please, Margaret. Or specific paint. Like, which orange do you have trouble with? Um, I'm looking for a paint that you guys love, a specific color that you guys love. Well, I, I actually just did teal and magenta or coral. If you went back here, here, I'll even show you. We're a spirit beast. So yeah, if you go back and watch the last two weeks of what I was painting, or coral, um, teal and magenta. So uh, yeah, so probably don't want to do teal and magenta again um, for everybody's sanity. Icy violet. All right, that's a great one. Mint green. Just did it, Clavicus. You stinker. Icy violet. Icy Violet. Icy Violet and Candlelight Yellow? That's actually pretty cool. We could have fun with that. They're almost compliments, but they're not quite. Alien Goo, Punk Rock Pink. I'll make some notes. I love Punk Rock Pink. That's actually my favorite name that I ever made up. Or one of them. All right. All right, cool, cool, very cool. We can we can have some fun with that. Do I have alien goo? It's a lot like dungeon slime. There's several um, pale yellow greens that are very similar there. I'll have to see if I actually have alien goo in my in my thing because I love dungeon slime, so I might not have actually brought alien goo with me. All right. Yellow orange. Well, candlelight yellow is an orangey yellow, so that will work then. Um, although lantern is more orangey. But yes, so we can we can tackle that. And hey, sleep monster, you're a new sub. Welcome, welcome to the stream, and thank you for the sub. A sub for this show is a vote for this show. You have now voted that you want more toothy monsterness, <laughs> or something. 
Um, yeah, Zero, I did teeth and claw things today. Rawr. Rawr, with razor mouth. And then I just got people to give me suggestions for uh, colors to use that they find uh, hard to use. And I'm just making some notes here on ways to tackle that. And I figured I would use those colors they suggested to paint this guy tomorrow. Um, to maybe give them some, uh, put a triad on them. And uh... Xanacles, normally if I had started this model not as just a demo, I would have painted the inside of the mouth first. But we can talk about um, gums and tongue colors and inside mouth colors uh, when we uh, return. I have no problem with talking about that briefly. Uh, actually, we could even use punk rock pink for that um, if we wanted to. We'd just have to mute it down a little because if you're going to do gums that look real, you really, or inside of inside of mouth membrane type stuff, um, you want it pink, but you don't want it bright pink uh, unless you're really looking like magic. Um, yeah, we could do a purple tongue. We do punk rock pink, pur purple tongue, do that sort of thing. Let me just make a note on that. Mouth, and I'll show you guys how to mix that. Purple tongue, we can do all of that. Sounds sweet. All right, so we'll cover a few different colors tomorrow on uh, and and probable triads that I would create with them um, for those that do not really have triads. So that sounds fun. All right, cool guys. Let me text Justin and then we'll you know maybe we'll start on uh, the mouth while we wait for him to get up here. Let me get him. Uh, Alrighty. Hey, Justin. Is the Rabbler acting up? No, no. Hey, Justin. We're almost done with stream. I need you. There we go. Alrighty. Anne's amazing Technicolor Razor Mouth. Yes. that's it. There is no reason that he cannot be brightly colored. Maybe That would go with the mating plumage thing, though. I don't know. That plays right into David's hands. <laughs> I was not the one who originated that, David. <laughs> He's innocent, he protests. He thinks he protesteth too much. I've got a spine there that's really problematic. All right, so yeah. Um, so let's actually... From the top, he looks like the ugliest koi ever. <laughs> this is true. All right. Do yeah, I... You could do him orange and white. Too. I wonder if I've got punk rock in my. Uh, in... I don't have it in my drawer. I do know how to make. Uh, I do know how to make punk rock from scratch. Maybe I'll just mix it. After all, I created a paint line for a reason, so I know all all the formulas, and I really can mix them all from uh, clear brights. Yeah, he, it could be kind of fun to paint him orange and white like a koi. I will give you guys that. But I, I'm intrigued by the uh, green, yellow, icy, violet um, idea. I kind of like that. I think we're going to go with it. Oh, my gosh. Gifting five subs to the community, Andre. Thank you. Wow. I'm back. It is it is Justin, everybody. Well, I guess I'm not going to mix up Punk Rock Pink, and we will just uh, address that tomorrow. I was I was gonna like you know ad lib for your, uh, while we waited for you, but you came back very promptly. Thank you. Oh, did I lose you again, Justin? No, sorry, I got a slew of emails all of a sudden. Oh no! All right. Well, cool. Well, if you find us somebody to raid, then you can uh, officially uh, pawn off the stream on some other person, and uh, you will have time to uh, tackle this. Also, how is everyone doing here since I was not here for the uh, the show primarily? Oh, we got a really crap cool ton one. of subs, dude. We got a crap ton of subs, like 15 or something. Because we had two five gift bomb subs, and then we had a bunch of other people subbing. So you totally have to add up our subs and see what we're at. Holy crap, guys. Thank you. That's awesome. I know, Wait, isn't it? Is 20 have, subs. Do I, do I have to leave the stream in order to get subs? I'll do that. <laughs> and Planer actually said if we got to 20 subs that she would do, uh, she would buy a Reaper gift certificate and give it away herself. That's awesome, Planer. Thank you. Yeah, isn't she? She loved that you. she got to wave the spoon around today, I think, so got her in a good mood. <laughs> I told her she could feel free to whack people with, with uh, spoons, so. Yes, 20 subs is amazing. Oh my gosh, Okral, you're crazy. 
Well, thank you. Wow, everybody on the stream today is getting a crap ton of subs. Is that? I don't feel like I've seen that name of before. He Isn't lurked. He? He's he's a he's a lurker who usually has to work at this time and so can't uh, participate. But he is participating today. So yes. Oh, cool! Look at that coming in with a big splash. Like he he's that guy that uh, that no one expected to be in the pool and then comes jumping in with a huge cannonball. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Yes, yes. All right. Yeah, combat the Monday vibes. This was a very, very good stream. Yes, you guys always kept, you guys kept it bright. Uh, modern brights colors are those fluorescent paint. No, I don't think we're doing fluorescent. I don't know about. Oh, the um, I'm trying to think of the modern brights. Which one that is? Is that the punk rock pink, LED blue, and uh, neon yellow? No, they're not. Um, we don't have access to a, a high quality fluorescent pigment right now, Bill. We haven't really been able to source one yet, so we uh, we can't do fluorescent at the moment. We made so, twenty five subs. Wow. That, yeah, that's awesome. We don't we don't actually have one today, but that does play into the paint giveaway. Yeah, uh, yeah. AMA thing. So it does move towards a goal that you guys don't otherwise know about right now. We just we've been working on it behind the scenes. The yes, we've been working right on now. a on a big giveaway for my show, like every like sixty subs or something. So, oh, oh Coral. Planer, Planer I, I is would... doing hers. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, Coral. I would never call you fat. <laughs> so, Justin, sorry that I jump in like this. I've been trying to reach you over Twitch. It wasn't working. But I wanted to ask if you could do the giveaway to make it easier. I'm covering the ten dollar euro pound gift certificate. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. So we can do the can giveaway. Do we yeah. can do the hashtag free on our on the stream, and then she can uh, communicate and get that get that right. uh, done. They send me a message over Twitch, and then I will arrange that. I promised twenty at twenty gifts at twenty subs. We got twenty five. Okay, I'm All jumping right, that let now. me let me pull up the uh, the Mubot here. Yeah, pull up Mubot. Let's get Thank this done. Thank you very much, Justin. That's okay, Planner. You never have to apologize for jumping into our chat. All right. The giveaway is live, so everyone type your hashtag free. Yep. Hashtag free for the gift certificate giveaway from Planner, who is really... You're not a Pokemon. No, you are not a Pokemon. Somebody else was... This guy is a Pokemon. Totally a Pokemon. And he's going to be a bright colored Pokemon tomorrow. I have to dig out my Icy Violet. Yes, you have a voice to go with the spoon now. Yes, hashtag free everybody. We have lots. We have lots of people hashtag freeing. We don't normally get a free in this stream. Yay! Oh, you're fine. I was done already. I was looking for ways to uh, occupy time until the end of the stream if Justin didn't get up here at Planner. So you are absolutely timely. Don't worry about it. Alrighty. Yep. Also, so I was, I was kind of curious. Um, uh, just as a just as a survey here for people. So, in order to kind of help support the channel potentially, tell me what you guys think about this. Um, we have the ability now that we're like super partner to run like sixty second ad breaks. So, at the end of the show, every single day we do a show. Um, would you guys be opposed to like a sixty second ad break before we did the raid? It wouldn't interfere with any content, but if you all just hung around while we ran an ad, it would uh, be amazing for the channel. You don't have to click the ad; you just gotta kind of hang out, talk to people in chat. So I know lots of streamers. Uh, lots of streamers do that. Um, they they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna run this ad, but I'm not gonna put out any content. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna be here and you know." I wish, honestly, Bells, if I could control the ad, it would 100% be a Reaper ad. Yeah, um, but we're just helping out Twitch, essentially, and that thus they make us even cooler. We, we correct, level up. Correct, yeah. yeah. I, I, no, honestly, Xandercles, it, it's based on your cookies. So what ad you see could be different from other people, but I also think Twitch kind of controls a lot of that, too. So it should not be political, I, I hope. But it is, hey, if it's, if it's ever political, let stuff. me know. Yeah, it's usually gamer stuff, you know, it's usually peripherals or something like that. But yeah, if it's controlled by your cookies, so. But I, I don't think I've ever seen a political ad on Twitch, actually, now that I think right. about it. So, and actually, I believe not everyone may see it. I think if you're a sub, you may not even see it. 
So let me let me go ahead and hit the button here. And then you guys <laughs> Ron Hawkins me, for president. You, let me see how this works for you guys. Okay, so it. we all um, have to hang three. around. Hang around, guys. Hang around for a minute. And then Justin will be back. We promise. Okay, Justin, hit the shiny button. I did. Oh, no, I'm not getting any ad. Well, you won't get an ad. It'll be, uh, I think it's only people who are oh. not subbed, I think. You keep getting an ad for bounty paper towels. That's funny. Yeah, I saw that one actually this morning when I was uh, when I tuned in. That's funny. I think I think the ad may only be applied to people. Uh, yeah, non subs. So if you're a sub, then may not even bother you guys. So <laughs> some in the witch got a toilet paper ad. Perfect. Yeah, you know what? You guys go ahead and tell me what your ads are. Go ahead and list them in. I know you guys. Yeah, tell the, us uh... what your ads are. That's a great idea. <laughs> Everybody's totally getting toilet to paper. People. Best Buy, See, HBO, HBO Max. Max. I didn't get an ad. Nope, nope. Picard, good. Subs don't get ads. See, I, I, always, I always thought the ads were just the pre-roll ads. I didn't think it was the non-sub, like, I didn't know that it was... Uh, just the ads I can run to because that's cool. That means that uh, if you guys are subs, then they... you know what this means, though, Justin. We really should reward them for watching through the ads by putting a, a spoof Reaper ad at the end. So, like, <laughs> like you should make a Ron Hawkins for president, you know, and a couple other ads for for fictional Reaper products that are totally inappropriate. Ed would totally back me up on this. I'm certain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I love the idea. I do. Make some spoof ads to reward people for watching the regular ads. It's like, yeah, here's your, here's your reward. Here's your cookie. Yeah. Um, but actually the cookie for today will be the, uh, the draw. So yeah. So what do we got? Everyone did their everybody, hashtag? Yeah. Everybody get their hashtag free in. It looks like we have several entries. So I'm going to go ahead and draw our one winner. <laughs> you had to watch the Sesame Street ads. Oh girl. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> all, all right. Our winner is J1121. All right, J. Woohoo! Everybody give J a round of applause. Clap, 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 clap. I'm Ed Pew, and I approve this message. Yes, yes, that's totally it. We totally need some spoof things now. I bet, you know, Ed, I bet we could get Ed to do a, a, a spoof ad. And we could promote a Reaper product, you know, during the ad. Make it an actual Reaper ad, but it also could be funny. I think this could be really good. Something like using Bones Miniatures to construct a fancy hat. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. Jay won, and then he gifted a sub. That's awesome. Aw, Jay, you. you're sweetie. Thank you so That's much. That's awesome. Fantastic. Guys, this has been a great stream. Thank you so much for making it great. And tomorrow we will uh, utilize the weird colors that you wanted me to use to make a very bright and colorful um, razor mouth. Yes, it was a very awesome. kind stream today. All right, people. I'm going to be gone so I can do my... Uh... Oh, need Mo Mocha to do his Sophie cosplay. I'm sure we could talk All about right. it. All right. All got a We got a raid going here. Who are we going to raid? We're going to be raiding Miniatures Den. All right. Miniatures Den it is. I'm going to pop over and say my last goodbye. So bye, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow for a very colorful Razor Mouth. Yay, says Razor Mouth. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Um. Yeah, Margaret. I'll uh. I'll I'll hit you up with that do that goal probably later today. I'll get it all counted and we'll figure it out. I'll talk to Anne. But thank you guys very much. Keep being awesome. Um. Spread the reaper love. And uh, John is here with me. John, you want to say something? Hi everyone. Have a good day. There's John. Um. So yeah, you guys keep being awesome. And I'll see you this afternoon for Miniature Monday. It will be going on, three o'clock central. Be there. Be square. All right. Thanks, guys.